Hello viewers, I want to welcome you once more in our preachings today and teachings. We, we want today to look at our thoughts. So sometimes uh, our thoughts are full of so very many things, but we need to look at it. For example, thoughts are, uh, when we talk about thoughts, these are the idea or opinion produced by thinking. When we think, then we, we, we are having some thoughts. And, um, or what occurs in mind. So sometimes there are things that occur in our mind and um, what is occurring is what we call the thoughts. So how are our thoughts today? We want to, to look at our thoughts basing on the biblical view. What the Bible talks about, the thinking capacity of a human being, what a person is having in mind. It's always good and it's always uh, welcomed for us to thank God and know that God is good in our lives and is ready to speak to our lives, is ready to teach us his ways that we may understand what he's doing in our lives. So our thinking capacity is uh, something that we are supposed to look at. It's something that we are supposed to, to be uh, enlightened on so that we can understand what God wants in our lives. Uh, it is very important to know that um, thoughts from... Uh, our mind are analytical. So sometimes we, we, we analyze uh, through the mind. So the minds we have or the thoughts that we have are through the analytical. We, we sit down, we, we analyze things. Uh, that's, uh, we collect information and data about uh, many things. And that is analytical. So most of the thinking capacity is full of analysis and many other things. Then also we can say that thoughts from our hearts are spontaneous. Spontaneous means an act of, um, of things without thinking. Sometimes we have spontaneous thoughts, thoughts that come, that flow in our hearts. Especially it is the heart that has that type of thinking that has to be. Then also we have uh, on the view that uh, biblical meditation combines analysis and spontaneity. Spontaneity and analyst, analytical thinking are all brought together through what we call uh, the biblical meditation. So meaning that uh, at this uh, time, we want to look at how to meditate upon God using our thoughts, using our heart, and everything that we do. We can uh, go straight to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. The Bible says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. Verse 4. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish stronghold. Verse 5 says, We demolish argument and every pretension that sets up itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I say thank you because you have given me this opportunity and even given to the viewers who are watching at me. Father, I pray for them that as they listen to this message that I'm going to present this hour, I pray that God, you give direction and you give uh, your guidance in everything that we are going to go through. For it's in Jesus' name I do pray and believe. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, I once more want to remind you that uh, we are talking about our thoughts. Our thoughts are very imperative. They are very important to our lives. As believers, as Christians, as we go to churches, as we do different things, whether you believe um, in the Bible or you believe in anything else that is not the Bible, you need to know that your, your thoughts, your minds must be set and must be ready to listen to the voice of God or must be ready to listen to what God is speaking to it. So when we talk about our thoughts, we talk about the voice of God, that we are listening to God speaking to us through the minds. Because... One of the key things that we are supposed to know that not all our minds originate with us. Every mind that you have is not originating from you. It could be originating from something else. What do you think your mind could be originating from? What do you think your mind could be uh, viewing or going unto? So most believers, 
uh, have been attacked by the devil in their minds and they are not aware that the devil is uh, doing that in their lives. So it is important for us to know that not all our minds originate with us. So sometimes we have different minds, we have different arguments. Why do we argue differently? Because we have different thoughts. We don't always seem to be thinking on the same side. It is very important for us to understand our thoughts because our thoughts are key to our lives as believers, are key to our lives as Christians. As we go to church, as we minister, as we move around, we need to welcome God and know that God is ready and is willing to listen to us. So, uh, friends, what I want to tell you is that uh, our mind could originate from our power of listening. What you listen to will always be part of your mind. So sometimes the power that we have of our eyes, what do you look at? Sometimes even we have films, we have videos, we have so very many things that you look at. It has to go and it gets to your mind. So you find yourself that you are in that state, the state where your mind has been taken over through different things. So if we talk about our thoughts, then we talk about what we listen to. What is it that you listen to when you are at home? What type of music do you listen to? What kind of movies do you watch? What kind of things do you do time to time? So our thoughts and our minds could originate from what our eyes are observing, what our people we are sitting with are always listening to us. It is very important that you need to know that your thoughts is part of your opinion. The friends you have, what they speak to you, is the opinion that they are trying to give you. So what somebody talks to you today and you look at it and say, no, it's not important or I'm just listening to it but it has no impact in my life, you must know that there is power in listening. Whenever you listen, you are creating a mind in you. You are creating a second thought, a second thinking about it. It is not all about listening and keeping quiet about it. You might keep quiet, but you might continue to experience such minds. You might continue to experience such thoughts, such things, and you might be thinking about, you wrestle with it, and at the end of the day, you find yourself getting in it because of what you are thinking. So Paul, while ministering to the Corinthians, uh, he said that for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. There is a way the world does, and there is a way those who believe in God do it. So I don't know how you are waging the war that we are undergoing right now. Even all over the world, we are having this pandemic, the coronavirus and everything. Are you taking it casually? Are you taking it uh, on spiritual mode and also understanding that God is there and uh, he will take care of you. You need to be safe, you need to keep yourself safe and you need to pray and you need to welcome God. Sometimes even people are playing around with uh, this virus that is moving all over the world. But we need to calm down, settle down, calm and say, God, we need you in our lives, we need you in our homes, we need you in our work that we do. So whenever we give our mind to God or our thoughts to God, then God will have uh, his way out in our lives, will have his way out in everything that we undertake. So we must not wage uh, uh, the way we wage war as the world does. We must be doing it in a spiritual way, in a momentum of welcoming God to take control of our lives. It is very good and very, very important for us to know that. Um, our mind could originate from our way of talking, what we talk about, what we read, what we plan, what we associate with. To associate means the company that you have affects your mind. So your thought and mind is associated with the kind of friends that you have. In Amos chapter 3 verse 3, Amos chapter 3 verse 3, the Bible says that, can the two walk together unless they agree? Can the two work together unless they agree. What am I trying to say? Uh, it, is it possible that you work with a person but you are not in agreement at all? At least there's an agreement, that's why you work with that person. The company that you have, the friends that you have, the people that you are working with, the people that you are agreeing with, you are doing that because 
you are having such a mind. So the thoughts that we have today originate from the kind of friends that we have, the company that we work with. The way we talk today, we talk because of the friends that we have. So if you have a friend who does not have faith, if you have a friend who does not believe in God, if you have a friend who does not know what God wants in his or her life, then at the end of the day, you are likely also not to uh, be a friend of Jesus. Sometimes we have moved away from our way of behaving. We have gone to a new behavior, a behavior that is amusing to many people. And all this has originated from our own thoughts that when we have friends, we are going to change them. But the kind of friend that you have, could not, you, could, you might not change that friend, but the friend will change you. So it is very important to know that we have different types of thoughts that are existing. And we need to know that uh, uh, we, it originates from what we watch, what we talk about. What are you talking with your friends? What, what, what is it that you are doing that you are looking at it? So it is very, very important that you personally, as an individual, you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to know that you commit your ways to God so that you don't wage um, the war like people of this world. You need to wage the war like uh, people who have the divine power of our Lord Jesus Christ, the divine power that is going to overcome all powers of darkness. So it is very important to know that even what we read, what articles do you read? What do you do? In most cases, when you are having your private studies, probably studying the Bible, do you study the Bible? When you are reading books, what kind of books do you read? Those books that you read are going to affect your, your mind. Your thoughts are not going to be the same again. So it is very, very important for you to know that as a believer, as a person who listens to the voice of God, as a person who believes in what God speaks to you, it is important to keep away from things that are not of a godly way so that you can associate yourself with godly and way of doing things that will make you be successful in the word of God. Um, it's also that most people are destroyed because of the mind they acquire. Sometimes the knowledge we acquire in schools and everywhere that we go. We sometimes get educated and we think to be more powerful. We think to be more exemplary and um, in our community, people look at us and they say, oh, so and so is well educated, so and so has um, a good uh, way of living. That type of living that you are living today, it could make your mind and you think that you are comfortable. I want to tell you, no, you still have a long way to go. Whether you are well educated or not, you need to believe in God. Whether you are educated or not, you need to believe in God. Do you know what? What you are supposed to know is that God wants all people. God does not uh, employ people so that God will call for your certificate and years of experience for you to, to know who God is. God, only what he needs is your soul. He needs your heart. He needs you to give your life to him. But most people are thinking about their education, the mind they have acquired. Even we have so very many people. I talk to many friends and sometimes you, we have people in the church. You find a person is in the church and probably is there because wants leadership. So the person is there not because loves Jesus, but wants to be a leader. Probably you could be in a church where the pastor is there, but you are also thinking to be a pastor in the same, same church. Or you, you are thinking to become a cell group leader where the cell group leader is there. There is no vacancy. You are fighting for leadership. It is not time for us to fight for leadership. Those thoughts and minds, once they come to our lives, it is something that we, we have acquired it through the way of thinking. But we need to be thinking more about God. We need to welcome God and know that God is speaking to our lives, is speaking to our children, is speaking to our families, to our fellowships and to our churches in everything that we do. It is very important and it's good for you to know that. Sometimes it's good to give your opinion. But every time before you give your opinion, every time before you give your thought, think about God. And think about the best thought that you can give that is going to edify the body of Christ. So uh, it is very important that uh, uh, our minds could also be affected because of the situation that we are facing. There are many situations that we undergo as believers in the church today. Today, the world is full of evil things. Today, 
the world is full of tribulation. Today, the world is full of so very many things. You imagine, probably you lose one of your beloved person. Sometimes such situations will leave you in a state of uh, thinking, in a state of finding it to be very difficult. Sometimes we go through difficult times. Right now we are going through uh, uh, difficult economic uh, situations that the economy is not good. The economy has left us in so very many um, ups and downs. We, we don't know when it will recover. But all in all, as we go through this, you need to thank God because you are alive. God has taught us to give thanks in all situations. Why are we supposed to give thanks in all situations? You are giving thanks in all situations because you are alive. You could have lost your beloved one, but you are alive. It's your beloved one who went. Why are you alive? Because you need to thank God that you are alive. Despite the fact that you are facing many challenges, despite the fact that you are going through many other things, you need to thank God. You give your thoughts to God. You give your mind to God and allow God teach you his ways. Then God will start to speak to you, to your mind. God will start to, to, to give you everything that you do. It's always good for us to know that as believers, our God is a loving God and is ready to teach us his ways. Our God is a loving God and is re ready to teach us his thoughts. Because this is what God says, that um, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. What kind of God are we worshipping? Meaning that we need to know that even if the situation looks very difficult, even if what we are undergoing right now is looking like as if it's pressing on us, it's pressing on what we are doing, look at it and say, God, we need you. Sometimes we don't need to complain very much, but we need to thank God. I see people even complaining that, oh, we are going to church, but we are spending little time. The little time you have, the little uh, work you have, you need to spend it to the right way. Use the opportunity that you have. It's an opportunity. It's the time to learn. It's the time to know. It's the time to think and know that God is speaking to you. So it is very important and it is our time as believers to know that God's voice is with us and is in our thoughts. Let us allow our thoughts, our mind, our way of thinking to be upon the Lord. We base it on the Lord. We give them to God and we tell God that God, we need you to be part and parcel of our lives, to be part of and parcel of our services. Let us not start the services in our own thoughts. Let us welcome God. We need to pray. We need to welcome God. Sometimes what speaks to you is what comes to happen. So it is important that any thought that comes to you that does not belong to God, you need to pray against those thoughts. You need to take them away from you so that God can demolish every argument. There are many arguments that we have. Believers are not supposed to be people who argue out. Believers are supposed to be people who are ready to listen to the word of God, who are ready to know what God is speaking to them. You find a believer who is too argumentative. Every time arguing in the church, arguing in the world about the political, the whatever and everything, about the church leadership and everything, you are supposed to keep your mind. You keep your thoughts to God. Straight, know that God is speaking to you. God is speaking to your family. God is speaking to your children. God is speaking to your services that you are going through. In most cases, we have challenges because we don't sit down and listen to the voice of God. We need to know that God speaks to us. God speaks to every person around. Even if you believe in God or not, you must know that God speaks to you. There are many things that come to your mind. Some of them originate from God. Others originate from the devil. That's why I started by saying that uh, we, we, we have something that not all our minds originate with us. We are, it's not us who think. If you are thinking about evil things, then all those things that you are thinking about, they are originating from the devil. If you are thinking about good things about your life, about everything that you do, all that is originating from God. Our thoughts could be, in one way or another, have challenges because we are undergoing so very many challenges that the devil is taking over in our lives. So it is very, very important for us to know that our God is a loving God and he has given us this opportunity. Uh, most people uh, are 
destroyed because of the mind they acquire. And also our mind could also be affected by the situation we go through. And also educating the mind is good. But when one educates his or her heart, it changes everything and allows God. I don't know what you always do. When you go to school, I know you educate the mind. But if you go to church, never educate the mind, but educate the heart. If you can educate the heart, it will change you. People who have never educated their hearts, they are the people who have failed in life. They only know what to talk about the world, but they don't know anything about God. They don't want to talk about God. They don't want to believe in what God is saying. So it is very important that we allow God um, so that we educate our heart to change everything in our lives. When we educate our heart, then we are going to educate many people. We are going to forgive those who have wronged us. We are going to accept that God is in charge of everything we do. But if we educate our mind or our thoughts, then we are going to, uh, uh, to, to, to come out with different ways of thinking. And we are going to even argue out about God. Look at this. In Psalms chapter 14, verse 1, the Bible says like this, that uh, people who do evil, they say that God is not there because they have done a lot of evil things. So if you find that you are not uh, believing that God is existing, you are teaching people that God is not existing, those are the thoughts that you have. And such thoughts originate from the devil. It originates from you refusing to educate your heart. If you say like that, have you ever asked yourself, who has given you strength to speak? Who has given you the power to write that God is not there? And who are you? Are you God? Are you the one who knows where you originated from? Are you the creator? One time, uh, I, I, I realized that there's one man who wrote a, something about Charles Darwin, about the evolution theory. He wrote about where people originated through evolution and everything. But while this man was dying, he repented and said he did wrong by writing such things. Because he wrote by his theory saying that man evolved. He never talked about God being the one who created man. But at the end of the day on his deathbed, he had to repent and say such things did not exist. Because he knew that the creator is God. So today, what you are believing in today, I want to pray that God may educate your heart. You are hard to be educated so that it becomes a big heart that is ready to listen to the voice of God, that is ready to know what God is speaking. Our thoughts might be captured by the devil. Look here. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, we find that uh, verse 3, 4 says, 10, 4 says, The weapon we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish the strongholds. There are strongholds that are in your mind, in your thoughts. What you are thinking about, there are some strongholds. If you are thinking about uh, killing a person, that one means there is a stronghold that is in you. If you are envious in your thoughts and everything that you do, you are not thinking good about people you fellowship with in the church. You are not thinking good about your parents, about your brothers, about your sisters, about the people you work with. There is something wrong with you. I want to encourage you that today, change your mind and know that that is a stronghold. You need to destroy that stronghold that you are undergoing. The stronghold that is affecting your life. The stronghold that is keeping you to stay under fear. The stronghold that is making you not to listen to what God is speaking to you. The stronghold could be even the witchcraft that has taken away your mind, your thought, and your everything. What you watch. So today, you find many children. There's uh, this thing known as Maria that is moving all over the seats and TV. You, you listen of it very much, you start thinking, could be another generation that somebody's creating, but is it educative to the children? What is it educating the children? And why are the children watching it? Why do they love it? Have you ever asked yourself as a parent? Have you ever asked yourself as a child, why do you love watching Maria and everything that is there? So because you find everywhere you go, even small kids, they sing those songs and everything that they do. Could it be, I was talking to one friend and was saying, could it be through that thing, there's another generation we are building in the future? What generation do we build? Look at it and understand that. Your thoughts are built based on what you watch and what you listen to every time. Uh, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought. There are thoughts that we are supposed to take captive and be obedient to Christ. 
I don't know if you know that you need to obey Christ. You need to come back to Christ. But you cannot come unless you allow Christ speak to you. Because the devil, if the devil captures your mind, he is going to destroy you. He's going to take away all the good things that you are thinking about. But today, I want to tell you, my friend, that we need to understand what God is speaking to us and what God wants us to do so that we understand his way that is teaching us, that is taking us all through. It is very important that we need to know that. If we are not keen, um, it is us who are supposed to be keen and understand what God is speaking to us. It is your mind that teaches you to be a distractor. You are destroying things. You are doing wrong things because it is the thoughts and the minds that you have. While the minds are full of arguments, for example, you find people uh, argue and say, God helps those who help themselves. Why is that verse? What, why do you use that thing? You use it because you want to comfort yourself. Don't comfort yourself by using the worldly things, but use the word of God if you believe in God. Uh, we need to set our minds to the knowledge of God. We need the knowledge of God in our lives. We need the knowledge of God in our children. We need the knowledge of God in our society and in everything that we undertake. It is good for us to know that as leaders in the country, it is good for us to know that as people who are in this country, we need to make our country grow. We need to welcome God and know that God is good in our lives. We become who we are because of our thoughts. So today you are who you are. You, you did what you did yesterday. You, you are doing what you are doing right now because of who you are. You are watching this television because of who you are. You could be watching my preachings because you just like the preachings and you are there listening to them. But at the end of the day, I know that God is going to change you. God is going to speak to you and is going to give you his way out. Uh, let us see in the book of John chapter 7. John chapter 7 verse 37 to 39. 37 the Bible says, On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said a loud voice, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes, 38, whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this, he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive up to um, the time the spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Uh, we need to educate more of our heart than our mind. What am I trying to say as we wind up is that we need to know that we, we are like the, the rivers. Uh, this is what the scripture is saying when you quote from verse 38 of John 7, 38. It says, whoever believes in me as this scripture has said, um, streams of living water will flow from within him. What type of streams of water, living water, will have to flow from within you? It is good for you to know that we need the power of the Holy Spirit to flow within our heart. We need the power of God that uh, by this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in what were later to receive. Jesus himself was there, but he was teaching about the power of the Holy Spirit that will come. We, people who are there were to believe in Jesus. And when Jesus will not be, uh, is going uh, and not be physically with them, then he will bring the power of the Holy Spirit. For now, we need to have the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to allow and allow God to speak to our lives, allow God uh, meditate to our lives and teach us his ways. When reasoning together with God, we receive the spirit of wisdom and understanding. We need to reason together with God. We need to welcome a, a God in our lives. Allow Christ to live through your life as a believer. Me personally, as a believer, I need to allow Christ to speak to me. I need to allow Christ to be part and parcel of my life. It is very important. And it is something that we are supposed to understand. So friends, as I wind up, I want to tell you that your mind speaks louder. But you need to bring every mind that you have to the obedience of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let Jesus Christ take part of your mind so that you will not mess up with your life. You will not mess up with your belief and your faith as a son of God. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I say thank you because of your good teachings that you have given us this hour. I pray that God, you bless every listener and teach them your ways. 
I'm bringing every mind and every thought that they have to be obedience to you as our Lord Jesus Christ, that God, every argument and every pretension that the devil rises up with, we rise against it and pray that God, through your power, divine power, divine nature, that God, you are taking control of everyone. I say thank you because you are good. For it's in Jesus' name I do pray and believe. Amen. May God bless you.